The most important thing, Kay, is that we learn from how we've responded to this pandemic because it's not gone away. We're going to go on having surges of illness, particularly affecting those who've not been vaccinated for months and perhaps even years to come. So for us at the World Health Organization, this kind of really cold, hard look at what happened is very, very useful. We don't think it's relevant to apportion blame at this stage. We do think it's right to learn. And one of the things that I want to stress that I've uh, gathered from reading this report is the absolute importance of maintaining people's understanding of what we as individuals need to do in order to keep ourselves safe in the face of this virus, as well as having the right public health in society. We can't just rely on vaccination. We need more than that. And that applies in Britain and it applies everywhere else. So it's very, very helpful report. Needs to be read, needs to be understood because the pandemic is very much with us all over the world right now. Would you be um, prepared to um, go further into talking about what we did right and what we did wrong, Mr Nabarro? Well, absolutely. I think that what we're learning is that when you get virus starting to really spread in a community, the one thing that you must not do is to delay. It doesn't help anybody. Uh, and. Occasionally people think, well, if we delay, everybody will get infected, so the problem will go away because they'll all be immune. That also doesn't work. So I think what we have to remember is be rapid and be firm as soon as you get cases of the disease. It doesn't mean you have complete lockdown. It just means you need to be able to test and to isolate and to stop spread. And secondly, lastly, just make sure everybody is part of the response. You know, the virus is the problem, people are the solution, so let's engage people in the response. And I believe that uh, there's a lot to learn about what could be done right at the beginning of a new series of spikes of disease that set out in the report quite clearly. Just say those words again, rapid and robust, don't wait, and involve people in the response because actually we're the solution, we're not the problem. Yeah, delaying lockdown costs many thousands of lives, is what the report says. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm going to say to you that each government has to decide how it's going to deal with things. You lock down when the situation is really serious. Before the lockdown, you want to have really strong test, trace and isolate programmes organised locally. And I think one of the points in the report is that at the beginning, test and trace was very centralised and that over time, the importance of a more local operation with good sharing of data was absolutely key. So that there's many of those kinds of pointers in those reports about how the system can be made more efficient. But most importantly, and I want to keep stressing it, to act quickly, because if you delay, what we're learning all over the world is that, is that people suffer. We talked about test, trace and isolate there. That was yes. also criticised in the report. 37 yes. billion quid cost uh, here in the UK and it wasn't fit for purpose. Well, of course, every country in the world has had to work through how they're going to quickly build up the ability to test people for coronavirus and then to isolate them and to trace their contacts and isolate them. And what's been learnt in Britain and in many other countries is you can't just tell people to isolate and expect them to stay at home without any kind of financial compensation. So all the issues which are brought out in this report about how you maintain isolation are also there. I think that if, if I had my way, every country would do this kind of analysis and would then have quite a dense learning moment uh, so that the lessons can be applied. Because I want to stress this virus has not gone away. It's continuing to mutate. It's capable, probably, of causing all sorts of future problems. So why not let's all learn what the experiences of the last two years and make sure we've got them on board for the years to come. And, and then we will actually be better able to resist it. It's not going to just go away if we wish it away. We have to organise through our own behaviour, 
through the way in which local authorities work and the way in which central government works to have a well-organised defence system against this, I fear, very dangerous and difficult virus. It's a slippery customer, this one. Mm.